John Davis, nice to meet you. Nice Lawrence to meet Edwards. You. <laughs> so yes. we're here making a sculpture, and uh, we're going to talk to you, and yeah. we're going to ask you a few questions and see where we get. Yeah. So you're obviously a miner. Yes. And um, does it go back a fair way in your family? Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, well, I started off. I was born down London. In London. Yeah. And I was born within the sound of Bow Bells. Really? So it's I'm a Cockney. Good Lord! Yeah. Anyway, during the war, I used to uh, have these little gas boxes. Yeah. With gas masking and everything. We used to carry them away. How old were you then? Hey, I was about... Uh, About four or five. Really? Yeah. What do you mean carry the gas bottle? You used to find them in, on the floor and the nick them or something or what? <laughs> what did you used to do with these gas bottles? Oh, we never, used, we never got to use them like, you know. They were just in a box. Really? And uh, like I say, I was at where my mum was. We lived at, well, we lived at Wilsden. Oh, right. And, uh, and but uh, my mother was down there. She went to Catholic Church at Wilsden, and they had me christened there. So I'm a true Cockney. Good God. So. Uh, yeah. But I take it you're not. I mean, your family's history isn't in London. It's more Welsh, I presume. Yeah, with my, Davis. Dad, my dad was born in a little place called Inesia. In Say the, that again. In the sea. In the sea. I don't know it, but uh, in the sea. Lived there. And, uh, in the middle that, of what, in the Welsh valleys. Yeah, in, in uh, not far from Porth. Ah, in okay. Ponty Pryd. Wow. And um, he he worked down at ten year old. He went down the pit. Good God. And uh, he had spent a year there. And he didn't like it because he was ten years. He was on about ten. Years old. Anyway, when he got about to fifteen or sixteen, him and his uh, brother, who used to be a, had school of motoring in Notting Hill Gate. His brother had a school of motoring. Yeah, you know, teaching people to drive. Right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway. Uh, <coughs> so he, like I say, he lived in the sea. He had seven brothers. Good God. And uh, and one sister. Seven brothers and one sister. Yeah. And the sister used to be headmistress of the primary school there. And my dad. He, he all his brothers were. Clever, you know. Really? What? One of them went to Unilever, director oh, of Unilever. Really? Yeah. And also, they all went off because some could speak different languages. One had a job with government, but he went lived abroad. So they must have been incredible parents to have brought yeah. up eight kids, all yeah. with this incredible yeah. potential. And, and it's it's funny because I never met my granddad then right because uh, he he died normal right but he was a sergeant major in the army right and on my mother's side my granddad there he was a sergeant major really? you know, good gosh anyway oh, uh, you think that so that's that's my dad's side like and do you know what happened what where he what stock he came from so your father's Father, your grandfather, was a miner as well. No, he was a, he was a he was a sergeant major. He was a sergeant major. In um, so he would have been what? What war? What time would he have been? Nineteen twenties, tens? Would he have been like a was it Boer War and Crimean War and that sort of thing? I don't know. Um, Gosh. And uh, anyway, yeah. <coughs> Going back to, I was born, like I said, I was born in Wilston. Yeah. And uh, 
Ah uh, yeah. And I used to carry these little gas pass boxes, of, like I said. As a four or five year old? Yeah, and they were going to send us away somewhere down south. Right. Like they did in them days. And uh, anyway, my dad says, you're not split it family up. So he fetched us back up to Doncaster. Right. To me, to me grandmother's, like, you know. Oh. So, did he come as well? Did the whole family come? Whole family, he came as well, because he got something on his chest, and he, fa he couldn't go it out, because they failed him on that. So what was he doing in London, working at his brother's driving school? Well, he, him and his brother went, went to, when he came out at Pitt, they said, well, we'll have to go somewhere else, so... Him and his brother, they went down London. And they were At what age? The age of 11? Yeah, well, it'd be a bit, bit older then, about 10. But anyway, when he got to about 16, he was cheating his age. And they were saying that he was 18. Anyway, he got a job, chauffeur, he were on buses, as a, a, a instructor on buses, you know, and then he got a job chauffeuring. And, and uh, for, for for rich families. Yeah, for a Jew. Really. Yeah. So. Uh, so that's a good job. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, and my mother was in service down there. Wow. As well. Anyway, uh, <coughs> they, they met, and like I said, they had, they had me, and, uh, and my son, brother, I uh, came up to London, up to Doncaster, to family. So there was two of you, yeah. you and your brother? Yeah, and yeah. when I was 14, I got a job market gardening. Really? Yeah. So, uh, I, I should have done my national service. Mm. So, to get out of it, I went down the pit. At what age? I'd be, uh, what? About 16, I think. And, and working down the pit, you got you off, got you off national service? Yeah. Because it was a, what do you call it, essential... Yeah. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. So all the miners didn't have to go to war? No. Good Lord. And uh, so, anyway, when I came up to Doncaster, I had a, me and my brother, he died at the age of 16. Oh no! Because he was six foot four, and uh, he used to play football for... It's under eight teams, and uh, one of the scouts from Arsenal yeah. came up and wanted him because he was only 16 and he was six foot four. Yeah. So, and uh, he was a good player. Anyway, he all of a sudden he started being ill, dragging his feet and all that. What, whilst playing football? Just, yeah, not, just walking yeah, around? Yeah. Well, and uh, anyway, well, he we was 15 really, and uh, he went to, to sent him to hospital, and he got that Bright's disease or something, and both his kidneys went. Of course, he had his 16th birthday, and he died, died just after his 16th birthday. Shit. Yeah. Christ. So, so I've got. So I got an, uh, my mother had another lad, Brian, and uh, he was brilliant. He uh, had a job when he left school. He had a job there. How old were you when your brother died? Is he older than you? Hey? Was your brother older than you? No, no, younger. So the, your 16-year-old brother, the footballer, was younger than you. Yeah, yeah. 
and uh, anyway, I started, and my interest was gardening. I had a job gardening first, and then, like I said, they, they were going to send me an army, so I left the market gardening business and went to, down the pit. What year, what age were you, what year was that? Oh, 1960s, 50s? Oh, so what would it be? I, I, was, uh, I was 87 yesterday. Were you really? Yeah. Happy birthday! So, uh, <laughs> 87. So, and I had 30 years to help it, so what, what year was that then? What year did you retire? The age of 65? Yeah. So yeah. you're 87 and you've got 20, 20 years between you. You've been retired 20 years. Yeah. So it's 50 years ago. About 30. 20, I think 19. I've been working there 30 years. Wow. And you retired? On service. Because I was charged when, and they used to say to me, John, go and get your, go in for your manager's papers and under manager's papers. But I was dyslectic. Were you? Yeah. Had that been diagnosed then? And, yeah. And also, I'd got other problems. So, and like, uh, I saw this advert in paper about astronauts in Sheffield. <laughs> right. And it said, uh, <coughs> if you think you, if you're deaf and everything, come along. Right. Anyway, first thing he said to me, he says, I says, well, what, what, what am I doing here then if it's to do with astronauts? He says, well, they can't go into space because they can't do that whirly gig. It goes round and round. <laughs> so, anyway, I was there and I went to him and he says, first thing he asked me, he says, what did you do when you were 10 year old, when you went on roundabouts? <laughs> right. And I said, I used to be sick. I used to get sick. Yeah. He says, well, that's what happens to our astronauts, what can't do that <laughs> early gig. So after that, and he says, you've also got something else as well. And it runs in families, not everybody has it. Well, I've got it. And uh, like, it's where he is now. He'd speak to me and I'll not hear him. He doesn't speak much. And uh, anyway, and he used to say, you're an ignorant devil, you, you've heard me. Oh, right. You know, but I haven't. Anyway. So you've got a deaf spot. Uh, so he says, that runs in, uh, runs in families. Not everybody has it. So... Uh, so uh, also, Duncan Goodyear, you know him, he used to be swimming. Duncan Goodhue? Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he the was, he was, he'd got it as well. Because I said, how do you go up when you have to sign autographs? <laughs> and he says, and he pulls this out here and he's got a book with pictures of him with his name on. And he gives him one of them. I can't. Really? Yeah. Anyway. After that, I'm going out through the... So going out of the Astronaut Research Centre in Sheffield, having, they've examined you yeah. to tell you what's wrong with you. Yeah. You weren't trying to be an astronaut, you were just going for a checkup. <laughs> you, you didn't want to be an astronaut. No. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, I'm going out to the car park and there's this chauffeur driven car comes in and who should jump out? Bob Monkhouse. <laughs> I says, hey up, Bob. He says, uh, oh, I says, are you dyslectic? He says, yes. 
I said, you were at Witchiest Men on Television. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he says, well, I've, I've got it. He says, but I have this, I talk into this. And my wife or secretary prints it all out. And this is because of his dyslexia? Yeah. Good God, really? Yeah. You heard it here first, guys. Yeah. Bob Monkhouse was dyslexic. Yeah. yeah. And he had a tape recorder. And yeah. you met him outside the Sheffield Astronaut Centre <laughs> for researching into ailments. Yeah. So, uh, Good Lord. I didn't expect to be going down this journey today. So, you started down the pit. What was your... And you were about 15, 14, 15. A bit older than that. A bit older that. than that. 18, 19. Yeah. After market gardening. Yeah. And what did you do? What did you get up to down in the pit? What was your first jobs? It was uh, just uh, taking tubs around and, you know, then I got a job at Cold Face. And I would charge me at Cold Face. Wow. And they kept saying, why don't you go and get your man going for your manager's paper? You're too clever. And I says, because I'm dyslectic, they says rubbish, but it wasn't rubbish. Right. Anyway. And did it, did you go for the manager's job? Hey? hey? Did you go for management? No. Do you look. think, do you think your dyslexia, your idea of dyslexia held you back, or was it a real problem? Dyslexia. Did you think, did you really feel that it held you back? I mean, yeah. it really was a problem. Yeah. Was it in your imagination? No. It, it yeah. me back. Yeah. Well, they must have known because it made me a chargeman and I work in seven days a week for really? 30 years. Seven days a week? Yeah, because when you were a chargeman, you used to come if there were any jobs you wanted to do in it, and they did them over at weekend, so I used to come on at weekends. Yeah. So, Good Lord. 30 years. 30 years of... Blimey, right <coughs> so, when you first started, it was the era. What pit? What pit was it? Hatfield Main. Hatfield Main. Yeah. Which is a wonderful. It's still upstanding, isn't it? Yeah. That's I. I, I cre crept in there and walked around it. Amazing place. Yeah. And uh, was it a time of uh, were the ponies still around? The pit ponies and things. Well, uh, when I went to do my training at pit, this is another thing. Is they sent me to uh, Bentley. Oh, yeah. So if we want you to be, take trainees on a cold face, what's production one? So I was taking them around and there was about 32 in, in class. And I said, it's no good sending me because I can't do any exams or anything like that because I can't write. Anyway, I said, uh, oh, all right. Yeah. So I did it, and there was a couple of them. I don't know what they were on for, but there were 32 anyway in mm. class. And I told them, I said, and then at Thursday, he says, you've got an exam. I says, I can't do an exam. He says, well, I'll phone head office up at Doncaster. Anyway, the centre office bloke, he says, I'm here to write everything down what you tell me. Good God. Anyway, like I said, there were over them and every people like that, clever blokes. So like I said, I'm going out at the door. I said, he says, where are you going? I said, I'm going home now, it's finished now, isn't it? He said, you don't know who's worried. I said, well, <laughs> how not win it? Anyway, I'm going out and he fetched me back, he says, John, you've won. No. Wow. So, after that I thought, well, I'm not thick, am I? No, you bloody yeah. well not. No. And, uh, good on them. Hey, good on them yeah. for giving you that guy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so, I will say that, you know. Yeah. Good Lord. So you, that was a, they were they were exams for management. Yeah. But did you act on them? Did you take any? Did you become a management, or did you no, just stay under? No, I didn't. Because I, 
I couldn't write or I can't write my own name hardly. Still? Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's, and it's been my a address, I can't tell, but some days I can write it and other days I can't. Really? Christ. Or it, Thorn. I used to write Thorn because I lived there for a bit and uh, I couldn't write, write Thorn. I used to write it about three different ways, it didn't make sense. Bloody hell. I started doing sport, boxing. Did you? Yeah. I'm a Yorkshire boxing champion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're in a, yeah. in front of a very impressive man today. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and I used to run as well. And uh, I run mile, you know, when Roger Bannister did it. Yeah. I, he did it in four minutes. Yeah. And I was 16, and I did it in, uh, what was it, four minutes. Four minutes, four and a half minutes and seven seconds. Jesus. Look so it wasn't bad thing, was it? Good God. And I was supposed to get a coach. Really? Yeah. So but I never I never got one. I played cricket for a couple of years. Yeah. God. Flipping heck. So all this time you were still in the, you were you could visit him out there. You were visiting your brother out in South Carolina. He yeah. settled out there. Yes. And you were still working in the mines down at Hatfield. Yeah. And, and I started running and right. walking, like I said. And uh, anyway. Oh crying. And uh, I used to go away of a boat from who was a friend of mine. He was a school teacher down Wellingborough, Northamptonshire, mm. and he used to teach 18-year-old girls to play golf and all that. And he was a brilliant golf golf player, and he's still playing golf. He's and he's about. 80, 85. He's formed a golf uh, team. Really? Yeah. Do you play golf? Not, not golf, hockey. You you play hockey? No, I can't because it's a right-handed game. You're a left-hander? Yeah. Oh, so am I. Yeah, so I can't play. Really? I couldn't play that way, you know. <laughs> And then I started, and he introduced me to walking abroad. All so, right. So uh, we used to go on a Friday, I used to go down, and we used to go down Friday and drive over to Belgium and get there to first walk for at eight o'clock. And we used to do that walk, 10k walk, and then We'd go on to afternoon to another walk, and uh, so we used to get three, a different time. We'd get one Sunday morning, and that's so we used to do three walks, and uh, and then we used to uh, we and. Uh, it used to be it used to be a worldwide organization. Right. IVV for sure. And it's Japanese who set it up. So I started going abroad. All right. With him. And we used to do this walk all over the place. And then we used to go up weekends and started this international walk, walkers from all over the world, and I used to do them all, and uh, I did one, I did Australia, Good God. New Zealand, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, Canada, America, and Vancouver Island. Crikey. And I used to do all them, and I did them all, and I've just done them 
having all my medals, all framed and all. Wow. Must have been stuck. And my little room, you not believe it, but I, I've got all these medals and certificates. It's unbelievable. Really? And I'm going to come and have a look. Yeah. And uh, while I'm in process of sorting it out, Anyway, but, uh, oh, I went to Jeff, Japan. Really? Yeah, and did it, a lot of walks there. And the Japanese gave me Master's Award. Really? Yeah, I'll show it you if you come. It's the house. And Master's Award, it's... Uh, and uh, <coughs> what they do, they bow to you. They come up to you and they go, ah, Matta Waka. And bow. I'm not joking. <laughs> Christ. So you are revered in Japan. Yeah. You are a. And I don't think I'll be able to do any more walking because I've got some of my leg back. All oh, right. Yeah. That's true. So you're an incredibly fit bloke. So, I mean, when did you get time for mining when you were doing all this travelling? Yeah. I'd left pit then. Had you? Yeah. All right, so this is after you've retired. Yeah. Well, what I did, when they were picketing and all that, my dad says, keep out of it. So I went and uh, I used to pay my membership, NUM membership. Mm. So, and I thought, he says, you've only, you've only about four or five years to go and you've, you've got a paid up member at NUM and that. And uh, so uh, what I did, I uh, used to go down and pay me money. Mm. So I, I was what the part membership, I was a full member, so I get entitlements, full time entitlements. Right. So that and what were those entitlements? That was time off and yeah, for uh, I got. Oh, you could go on a week's holiday, uh, and they pay for it. Really? Yeah, and I did one up at uh, Scarborough. Good God. And was this during the strike? Hey? This during the strike? Oh, no, after the strike. <clears throat> so what did you do in the strike? Oh, I did. I used to just garden, do my garden and walking. And I got prizes for my garden. So you kept clear of the, the trouble, you kept out of the way? Yeah. But did you suffer from, uh, financially, I mean, did it, the, the, the loss of wages and stuff where the strike was going on, did you suffer for that? Well, I, uh, I, was, I was on invalidity. Because I took, I took early retirement. I was sort of in trouble with my knees hands and everything like that. Gosh. So that was in the 1980s? Yeah. So you live with your wife now? Yeah. So how come you got into your father's, back into your father's house? <laughs> oh, because I got divorced. I had to sell it, didn't I? Oh, I see. You had to sell Thorn. Yeah. She was going out with one of the bosses at a thing. And it was funny because I was on nights. And uh, I went down shaft and it overwhelmed. And it shook, shook us all up. We went down. One broke his thumb and one dislocated his shoulder. And it's funny. There were 13 on that cage. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I came home, kids in bed, no wife. 
No wife, the kid's in bed. Yeah, and uh, I said, I don't know where, where is she? Anyway, we've been going out with a boss at the IBB, at the uh, factory where she worked. Oh. So. That's a bit of a shock. Yeah, so after that, it, things weren't very good. And then I found out, oh, I went to live with my dad for a bit, and uh, she was there, and she'd got a broken house with her. And it was from, from Medderall here. You were one of the security blocks at Medderall. And uh, anyway, she went with him. He's living in Taiwan now. Thailand, sure, sorry. She's living in Thailand? He is. He is. Yeah. But we were in, we was in the uh, queue, queuing up to go to, uh, to Mallorca. And uh, while I queue, this bloke says, you're all right, you. Three women, we And I says, is it? Um, you treat them all right. He says, I have to use whip now and again, right? But <laughs> anyway, he says, who were they? And I says, that's me wife, that's me ex-wife, that's my wife, and and their friend who was 10 or 15 years younger, she says, I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> 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 she won't like that. Anyway. So you still... But she, st the one what said that, she died six months later. God. With that to do with your uh, blood cells, is it? White and black cells yeah. or whatever it is. So you still used to hang out with your wife? You still, you, still you, go out with your wife. Your new wife and your old wife were yeah. quite friendly. Yeah. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah. And I've got a nice and daughter. Lovely. Both of them. Yeah. Check in your head. Huh? It's my head go back there. Is that my forehead? That's, my your, that's your forehead, yeah. Hey, you that are. That far back? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Which is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can put it here if you want. Yeah, we a bit forward. Okay. That. You want to put a little bit forward then? Try and get you smiling. <laughs> Do you recognise anyone in your family? Hey. Do you recognise anyone in your family? Usually people see someone in their family. Like a grandfather or a father or... Same like my dad. Like your dad? 
Yeah. <laughs> That'll be in the back of the monument, no one will see that. <laughs> you have to be up to here, about here. You think you should come closer? Yeah. I think you're under the impression your hair, you've got more hair than you have. No, we will come apart here. I like it to put it there. Yeah. There. You want it here, do you? Yeah. Gotta concentrate on your mouth and your chin. Hey? Concentrate on your mouth and your chin. Get that right, you've got a nice big chin. Good chin. The wolfish smile. <laughs> Thirteen minutes to go. <clears throat> John's worrying about his hairline. I think you're under the impression that you've got more hair than you have. Yeah. <laughs> is the quote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. I've never laughed so hard in a long time. Now you'll be pleased to know I smoothed you out a bit with some white spirit. I rub you down. <laughs> Take years off you. 86, 85, 84, 87. So both your brothers died relatively young. Hey? Both your brothers died relatively young. Yeah. Is your sister still alive? Yeah, I've got two sisters. Two sisters. And are they in Doncaster or are they elsewhere? Yeah, one lives at Sprockbury. And one lives at Skeller. Up there. She works for a post office. Oh, nice. Well, she's still working. Yeah. So she's a lot younger. She has to travel to Sheffield every day. It's a close that one at Johnny. They're closing a lot, aren't they? Yeah. Shocking. Really. Banks and post offices. She knows all codes. Really? Post codes. Oh, really? Sit like that. The strong man. <laughs> With a twinkle in his eye, that's what I'm going to try and get. <laughs> Getting a twinkle in your eye in butter is very difficult. <laughs> There's something wrong with my. 
there's no hair there. I'm very sorry. <laughs> there is no. I put hair in there for you, but there isn't. Well, that's just a strand. I've got. I got those. <laughs> Well, I think we're done, sir, John. Yeah. Thank you very much. You've been absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic. It's been one of the best films I think we've done. Brilliant. You and know, are you coming to our house to have a look? I don't know if I can. I haven't got enough time today. Uh, and I'm back any, down to... Any time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.